I'm in a lot of Facebook groups and there are really, really talented people in these Facebook groups that are looking for actors for their projects. Sometimes people are excited and know so much about their project that they forget that everybody else has no idea what they're talking about and simply put, I'm looking for male and female actors, non-union for an upcoming project. Please email me at this at gmail.com. Putting no information about the age or the genre or the dates or the COVID restrictions that they're following or the anything, any anything. They're just saying actors email here. That is such a huge waste of time. You're going to waste so much of your time if you're doing this and you're going to waste a lot of the actors times as well. Looking through a bunch of emails because you're likely going to get a lot of answers, especially from people that have less experience that are going to contact you and you're going to have to go through so many things. And so do yourself a favor and do us actors a favor and please include all or some of this information, as much information as you can provide. If some of this doesn't pertain to your specific project, or maybe you don't know the dates yet of it, maybe put in a date range we're planning to shoot in the spring or in the summer, or, um, you know, we don't have a budget yet. So as of right now, we're not going to be able to pay you, but maybe in the future, we'll be, have a very small stipend, something to tell us something about this project, who you're looking for, and to make it a more successful collaboration. If you are somebody looking for an actor, or if you're an actor and you've seen this before, feel free to share this video with them. I made a list of what usually comes on a casting call whenever my agents send it to me or when I see some that I'm like, yes, this has all the information. I know I'm totally right for this and I'm available for these dates. I qualify for these things that they're looking for. So I'm going to send my stuff in. And you can be in this order or any order you want, but in general, this is the order that I see it and the order that logically makes more the most sense in my head. And of course, this isn't like a 100% correct and the only way you should do it, but this is information that me as an actress, I would appreciate to see on casting calls. First, the name of the project. If it's a film, a short film, that the name of that project, if it's a play, if it's a commercial, let's say for Fitbit, you know, just the main title of what it's for then the casting director or the company if you aren't necessarily hiring a casting company but you know like me i would be the casting director for a project would be belgica rodriguez just something so i know who is working on it next the director if that's applicable again if it's for a smaller project for you then you can you can just put casting director slash director slash whatever all of the hats that you're wearing shoot slash performance dates. This is very, very, very important because if somebody already has booked something or, um, you know, no, absolutely knows that certain dates don't work, then you don't have to waste your time in auditioning them. And then after the second or third audition, you realize they're not available. The rate, this is especially important in a commercial setting, of course, because there's different um, rates for different periods of time that you're going to be using it, but make sure you put the rate and the overtime. More than likely, some kind of overtime is going to happen in filming. A lot of the times it takes more time than you think. So just in case, put overtime or say flat rate, we can't afford to do any overtime. We're giving you this amount of money for the entire thing. Might go over, you know, just do, at least like two hours or if it's a buyout just say it's a flat rate the usage this is more of course for commercial usage but you can put if it's going to go online if it's going to go on tv where it's going to be published and for how many years or if it's a buyout and then the specs so for this one the name of the character gender age ethnicity and description of the character so let's say i was casting somebody to play me i would say a five foot ten to six foot tall Latina um, who is of Mexican descent, 29 to 32 years old, can play 29 to 32 years old, um, and then uh, is a, an actress and YouTube content creator. That's the description of that character. And depending on what the story is about, you can put a little line of, you know, this is a character that is uh, hardworking and kind or something, you know, something to describe the character quickly. You don't want to make the, the casting call that long, which I am thinking that's why people don't do those things. Cause they're like, Oh, the actors aren't going to read it anyway. But let me tell you from an actress, I read it all. And I read it a few times to make sure that I am right for it.
then the audition due date or the audition time if it's going to be a zoom audition some kind of live video audition the time slots that might be available or dates that are available or the deadline for the self-tape audition and i suggest that you put a date but also a time so if it's january 1st make sure you put 11 59 pm pst like a hard deadline and if you know that you're not going to be able to accept any late entries because you have some kind of deadline then make sure you put that on there as well because I know that sometimes people put a certain deadline, but they really have the flexibility for a little bit longer. So if you request it, usually those people will say, okay, we can give you, you know, one more day. Next to that timeline, you should put an email to submit their self-tape audition for if it's going to be a self-tape or a link to the folder where you want them to upload the file to. As an actress, the easiest way for me to be able to send an audition is through an unlisted YouTube link because that is a really quick way to upload my video to and then be able to share it to you and for you to be able to share it with a lot of other people without having to download it. So if you are thinking about how should I accept these self-tape auditions, I highly, highly suggest that you ask people to upload it to YouTube because it's fast and send you an unlisted YouTube link. The slate, yes or no, do you want them to slate? For me, it's 2021, the file should be labeled their name. You should already have their headshot or some kind of way to see the face connected to the name. So I don't think a slate is very necessary in general, but if you want to just see the actor be themselves for a few seconds and want them to slate, make sure you include if you want it to be a full body slate, if you want it to be a medium shot slate, if you want them to start with their name, show you their hands, do profiles, do a full body shot and you know turn around so you can see what their body looks like because you aren't able to meet them in person right now, at least for the first audition, make sure that you say, yes, I want you to slate, start with your name, and then you can go into the audition. And if you don't want them to slate, you can include it in the email that please do not slate. And then the actual audition content, the script, the sides, uh, are you going to give them a prompt of, you know, if you want to see what their personality is like, are you going to give them a prompt? Tell me something about yourself. Um, tell me your favorite blank. Tell me about your favorite blank and why. Instructions to an activity. A lot of the time for commercial auditions, they just ask us to do some kind of self tape where we're, you know, working on a computer or folding clothes or cooking or something like that or simply a request for their headshot and reel. A lot of people do this where they ask people to send in your headshot resume reel and then they will let you know if you make it to the next round of people, which is requesting you to do a self-tape audition of specific sides. And then something that I would very much appreciate is a line at the bottom that says, if you have questions, you can contact this email or an FAQ. I know a lot of more advanced professional people have this, a uh, frequently asked questions um, because different casting companies and different casting directors like things differently or um, they just have a lot of newbies coming in. So if you have, it's gonna save you so much time, but also the actors, because if they do have a question, they'll just go and read it. Or if somebody emails you and asks you a question that's already down there, you can say, please refer to you know line three of the Q&A. And that's essentially what I would so appreciate if I saw in every casting call that is published. Of course, not everybody's gonna do this, but I think it is a great way to save time for yourself and for the actors. And please share this with somebody who is looking to hire actors. If you have any other video suggestions of this type, I would love to make them to make the casting process more efficient and um, you know, actors' lives easier. Thank you so much for watching. And at the end of every video, I feature another channel. This is today's feature. If you would like to be featured on my next video. Make sure you're subscribed, like this video, and leave me a comment. I am going to leave this list in the description, so if you just want to copy and paste it and publish it somewhere looking for actors, you can also make a flyer. Um, of course, this video is not sponsored by anybody, but you can make a flyer that looks nice and be able to share it on your socials um, on places like Canva. If you like to edit and already have Photoshop, that's another great place where you can make a flyer. There's so many places for free as well that you can make flyers instead of just a PDF that you you know share around. It's gonna be so much more enticing and so much more professional looking if you actually make a flyer with all of this information. Information.